In this video, we're going to talk about how to verify trigonometric identities, which is not a very easy topic. But here's what you need to do. Typically, you'll be given a problem with an equation. And what you need to do is you need to show that the left side of this equation is equivalent to the right side of this equation. Now, listed on the board are some techniques that you can use to do just that. One of the first things that I will look to is trying to convert everything to sine and cosine. That's a good place to start. It doesn't work for every problem, but at least for some of the easier ones, it's a, a good way to get started solving it. Now, for step two, sometimes you'll see a problem where there's two terms on the left but one term on the right. When you see this, what you could try to do is, if A and B are fractions, you can try to get the common denominator of both fractions, convert it into a single fraction, and then go from there. Other times, you may need to factor so that you can convert the two terms into one term. Now, step three is basically the reverse of step two. If you have one term on the left and two terms on the right, to convert from one to two terms, you could distribute, or if you have a fraction, you can split that one fraction into two smaller fractions. And for step four, converting division into multiplication or vice versa. For that, I have to show it to you. You just have to see it in action. Number five, sometimes you need to multiply by the conjugate. If you see one plus sign, it could be one minus sign, or one plus or minus cosine, let's say on the denominator of a fraction, that's a good indication that you need to multiply by the conjugate. And then for step six, sometimes you need to factor, other times you need to FOIL. And if you've factored in algebra, then you can apply those same techniques here. Sometimes you'll see situations where you have difference, differences of perfect squares, or you may have a trinomial like this, where you can see that it's factorable. So those are some other things that you wanna keep in mind uh, when solving these problems. Now, before we begin working on a few practice problems, you may wanna take down some notes. By the way, I recommend writing what you see on the board right now. So the first thing you need to know is some identities. Sine squared, plus cosine squared is equal to one. Make sure you know that one. That's a very common one. And then I'm sure you've seen this one. One plus tangent squared is equal to secant squared. So you want to commit these identities to uh, memory because you're going to be using them a lot. The next one, one plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. Now, you need to be familiar with uh, these other identities. Tangent is equal to sine over cosine. Cotangent is the reverse. It's cosine divided by sine. So therefore, tangent is the reciprocal of cotangent. Tangent is 1 over cotangent. And then here's some other reciprocal identities. Secant is equal to one over cosine. And cosecant is one over sine. So make sure you write this, write all this stuff down on a piece of paper. It's gonna be very helpful as we work on some problems. Let's begin with the first problem. Let's say we have sine x times secant x and let's say that's equal to tangent x. Go ahead and verify this trigonometric identity. By the way, for each of these problems, I recommend that you pause the video, try it yourself, and then, you know, after you finish working a problem, play the video to see if you have the right answer. So we're going to use step number one. We're going to convert everything into sine and cosine. Now, you could start with the left side of the equation and make it look like the, like the right side of the equation, or you could start with the right side 
and then make that equivalent to the left side. Or you could start with both and make make them equal to each other. It really doesn't matter. As long as you show that the left side is equal to the right side, you'll get the right answer. But for me personally, I like to keep the right side the same and I like to start with the left side of the equation and convert it to the right side. So you don't have to do it that way, but that's the way I like to do it, which that's the way I'm going to be using in this video. So just to give you a heads up. So right now I'm going to leave the sine function the way it is. Now we know that secant is 1 over cosine. Now if you want to, you can write this as sine x over 1. Sine times 1 is just sine. And on the bottom, if we multiply these two, 1 times cosine is cosine. And based on the formulas that we wrote earlier, we know that sine divided by cosine is tangent. So now that the left side is the same as the right side, we're finished here. So we've verified this particular trigonometric identity. So once you show that the left side is equal to the right side, you're finished. Now let's move on to our next example, number two. Let's say we have tangent squared times cotangent squared, and that's equal to 1. Go ahead and verify this trigonometric identity. So let's begin by converting everything into sine and cosine, which is step number one. So we know that tangent is sine over cosine. Now we have tangent squared, so we have two of them. So this is going to be sine over cosine squared. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. We know that cotangent is cosine over sine, and this is squared as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the exponent. This is sine to the first power, and it's raised to the second power. So 1 times 2 is 2, so this becomes sine squared. And the same is true with cosine. We're going to raise cosine to the second power. So this becomes cosine squared times cosine squared divided by sine squared. Now cosine squared divided by cosine squared, that's 1. Sine squared divided by sine squared is 1. So basically we get 1 times 1, which is 1. So that's it for number 2. That's all that we need to do in order to uh, verify this particular identity. Now let's move on to our next example, number 3. So for this one, here's the problem. Cotangent times secant x times sine x is equal to 1. Go ahead and verify it. So like before, we're going to use step number 1. We're going to try converting everything into sine and cosine. So we can change cotangent into cosine over sine. Secant, we know, is 1 over cosine. And sine, we could just leave it as sine x, or you can write it as sine x over 1. So these two will cancel. Sine x over sine x is 1. And cosine x divided by cosine is 1. So this works out to be something similar. 1 times 1 is 1. And so that's it for that problem. All right, let's work on some harder examples. Each problem will progressively get harder. This one is a little bit harder than the last one, but not too hard. So here we have cosine times secant divided by cotangent. And this is equal to tangent. Go ahead and prove it. So let's begin by converting everything on the left side into sine and cosine. So cosine, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I'm going to write it as cosine over 1. Secant, we can write that as 1 over cosine. Now, cotangent, if you want to, you could convert it to cosine over sine. You don't have to, but for this problem, actually, I'm going to leave it as cotangent. 
And here's why. We know we can cancel cosine. And so that's going to give us a 1 in the numerator. And we know that 1 over cotangent is tangent. So for this problem, there's no need to convert cotangent into uh, cosine of a side. If you did convert it, you can still get the right answer. So it wouldn't be a bad thing. You would just be introducing an extra step. So the last thing to do is replace 1 over cotan with tangent. And that'll be it for this problem. Now let's move on to our fifth example. For this one, we're going to have sine x times tangent x. And this is going to be equal to 1 minus cosine squared divided by cosine x. So what do you think we need to do for this problem? How can we change sine times tangent into 1 minus cosine squared over cosine? So sometimes what you could do is look at the right side to see where to go. The right side of the equation, if you're starting from the left side, that is, the right side of the equation can be like a guide. And we only have the cosine function on the right side. So that tells us we need to introduce cosine into the left side. Right now, the only thing we could change is tangent. We can convert tangent into sine and cosine. So I'm going to write sine as sine over 1. And tangent, I'm going to replace that with sine over cosine. Now, if you don't want to rewrite what's on the right side, you could just put this. Now, let's multiply. Sine x times sine x is sine squared. And on the bottom, we have 1 times cosine, which is cosine. So the good thing is we have what is on the bottom. So this part is the same. What we need to do is convert sine squared into 1 minus cosine squared. Now, how can we do that? Well, we're familiar with this identity. We know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract both sides by cosine squared. So these two will cancel. And I'm going to get sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. So knowing that, all I need to do is replace sine squared with an equivalent expression, 1 minus cosine squared. And that's going to give me the answer. And so now, the identity has been verified. Try this one. Cosine squared minus sine squared Let's say that's equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared. So what do we need to do here? So once again, we're going to look at the right side of the equation as a guide. On the right side, there is no cosine function, only sine. So somehow, we need to convert cosine into a sine function. And we know how to do that using this identity. Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So we need to get cosine squared by itself. So for this time, we need to subtract both sides by sine squared. So on the left side, what we have left over is cosine squared. And on the right side, we have 1 minus sine squared. So let's replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. So we're going to have 1 minus sine squared minus another sine squared. And that's equal to what we see on the right side. Now, there's like an invisible 1 here. So we have negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. So then this becomes 1 minus 2 sine squared. And that's all we need to do for this problem.
So it helps to look at the right side, which tells you what you need to do with the left side. So use the right side of the equation as a guide. All right, number seven. So this one is going to be a little different than the others. Here we have sine x times tangent x plus cosine x, and this one is equal to secant x. So notice that we have two terms on the left, one term on the right. So this is like the first term, sine times tangent. And here, this is the second term, cosine. And this is the third one. So we have this form, a plus b equals c. What do we need to do here? Well, we can't factor out a sine or a cosine or a tangent because we don't have a common factor. So the other thing that we could do is somehow get two fractions, get common denominators, and then combine it into a single fraction. The question is, how can we do that? Well, let's begin by turning everything into sine and cosine. That is everything on the left side. So let's write sine as sine over 1. And tangent, we're going to convert that into sine over cosine. And then cosine x, we're just going to write it as cosine over 1. We want to put everything in fraction form. On the left, we can multiply sine times sine, which will give us sine squared. On the bottom, 1 times cosine, so that's just cosine. So now we have two fractions, but we don't have the same denominator. How can we get common denominators? In order to do that, we need to multiply the second fraction by the denominator of the first. And whatever you do to the top, you must also do to the bottom. So if you multiply the numerator of this fraction by cosine, you need to do the same thing with the denominator. So we're going to have sine squared over cosine x plus, so cosine times cosine, that's cosine squared. And on the bottom, 1 times cosine, we know it's cosine. All right, let me delete a few things just to create extra space. So now that these two fractions share the same denominator, what we can do is combine it into a single fraction. So we can now write sine squared plus cosine squared, all divided by the same common denominator of cosine. Now, hopefully you have your list of trigonometric identities with you because we have an, an important identity, one that you're familiar with, sine squared plus cosine squared. What does that equal? Well, we know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So now this becomes 1 over cosine. And we know that secant is 1 over cosine. So we can replace 1 over cosine with secant. And that's it for this problem. The identity has been verified. So whenever you see a situation like this where you have two terms on the left, one term on the right, you may need to convert it into two fractions, get common denominators, combine it into a single fraction, and then simplify. Now let's move on to number eight. Here we have secant minus cosine x, and this is equal to tangent x times sine x. Go ahead and try it. So notice that we have two terms on the left. Well, this time it's a minus b instead of a plus b. And we only have one term on the right, tangent times sine. That's one term. So we need to do something similar. Either we could try to factor, or we can try to convert into fractions and get common denominators. We don't have a common term to factor, so we need to get common denominators. 
So let's turn secant and cosine into fractions. Secant, we know it's 1 over cosine. And cosine, we can turn that into a fraction by putting it over 1. So now, in order to get common denominators, we need to multiply the second fraction by cosine over cosine. So this becomes 1 over cosine minus cosine squared over cosine. So now that we have the same denominator, we can combine this into a single fraction. So this becomes 1 minus cosine squared over cosine x. And that's equal to tangent times sine x. Now, what should we do at this point? Notice that in this, 1 minus cosine squared is an identity. We know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So if we take this term, move it to the other side, we're going to get sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. It's positive on the left side, but when you move it to the other side, it's going to be negative. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace 1 minus cosine squared with sine squared. So we have sine squared over cosine, and this is equal to tangent times sine. Now notice what we have here. This is basically rule number four. Here, we have division. And here, we have multiplication. How do we convert division into multiplication? Well, let me show you. Let's say if you have A over B. You can convert that fraction into multiplication by writing it this way. A over 1 times 1 over B. So that's a simple way in which you can convert division into multiplication. So we can write this as sine squared over 1 times 1 minus cosine. Now, sine squared is sine times sine. Now, what you could do is you could move this sign to this fraction. There's nothing wrong with that. For instance, let's say if I have 4 times 4 over 1 times 1 over 2. If I were to move the 4 to this other fraction, it would be 4 over 1 times 4 over 2. The value of the entire situation is still the same. This is 16 divided by 2. That's 8. This is still 4 times 4, which is 16, divided by 2. That's still 8. So you could move the sign from one fraction to the other when you're multiplying. It doesn't change the value of the fraction. So what we now have is sine x over 1 times sine over cosine and that is equal to tangent times sine x. Sine x over 1, we can just leave it as sine. And sine divided by cosine, we know it's tangent. Sine times tangent is equal to tangent times sine. You can reverse it. 3 times 5, for instance, is equal to 5 times 3. They both equal 15. So once you get to this part, that's it. The problem is finished.